It is one of the earlier kickoffs at Winchester Park, and the Georgians are ready to play their first televised game in the 2023 Issa Schoolboy Football Competition, the Manning Cup against their opponents. Jose Mati, and we are live. It's warm here, and you can see the two protagonists getting ready to grace the field. And the Georgians, again, they'll be hoping to get yet another three points. They have been perfect so far in this season, and they'd be wanting to put on a show the last few years. They haven't been at their best, not at the lofty heights that we saw from them uh, over a decade ago. But Leger, how much are you looking forward to this matchup between these two teams? Well, I'm looking forward to it a lot. Uh, I, I think Jose Marti is a program that's growing. The coach Patrick Lewis has stated that this is something that he wants to continue to develop. He's involved at all three levels of schoolboy football under 19, 16 and 14. But St. George's, this is a team that speaking of development uh, a lot of the core players the best players including that man right there in screen adrian reed he has been here for three years now developing he has national experience at under 17 level he has played in a jpl and a link cup final at senior level as well alongside all of these talented players this st george's team i know that they have very very high aspirations this season yeah they have a, a few star named players in their squad and of course they are coached by Neville Bertisbell, uh, one of the leading football minds in the country and uh, really a pleasure to, to watch him work at the head of this St. George's College program alongside Marcel Gale of course as the teams make their way out to the middle St. George's College uh, decked out in majority white with red numbers and of course uh, Jose Mati uh, will be looking to to make their mark. They've had a good start to the season, Jose Marti. They would have lost their last game against Waterford, who are behind them in the standings, so they would consider that loss at home to have been a disappointment. And uh, let's see what they will offer against St. George's College. It was a champion rather that they lost to 1 0 over the weekend. As we take a look at the officials, Omar Hines will be in charge of this one. Rolanza Bennett and Kenorda Hall will assist him. And uh, Glenn Lamy is the fourth official. Yes, you play football, we rest. You won't try to play in a football, you don't try to rest. Alright? Current time, we have Adidas. So, just a peek into what's happening as far as the toss is concerned, and we'll take a look at the lineup for St. George's College. Jaden Thompson is in goal, uh, Jaheem Henry, Javier Taylor, Matthew Spence. Brian Burkett, who has 11 goals and six assists to his name so far this season, uh, one of five midfielders. Adrian Reed as well, uh, wearing the captain's armband, eight goals and five assists to his name. Ajani Peer, Tashawn Neal, Jindu Powell, O'Neill Mitchell, and Michael Pennant. St. George's looking to apply their usual slick passing game and a formation to suit. Lining up with three at the back, but expect a lot of fluidity among that or in that formation. As we take a look at uh, Jose Marti, Jamar Reed in goal, Orain Gale, Tishon Henry, Kiefer Powell, Rikelme Headley, uh, Shemar Hanchard, of course, is their striker with six goals so far this season. Andrew Anderson, Kwesi Reese, Davian Gale, Kimali Blackwood, and Malika Reed complete the starting lineup. And to counteract the slick passing of St. George's, Jose Marti probably looking to line up in a 4-4-2, looking to defend deep and try and stave out this electric attack 
the best attacking schoolboy football thus far. Well, apart from St. Andrew Technical, only two less goals. Let's see what they will produce today. So, moments away from kickoff. And I think it's going to be an early day here at St. George's College. It's a very early time for kickoff. There was a lot of rain over the last few days and uh, a bit of concern as to whether we would have been able to complete two matches if it was at the usual kickoff time. But referee Hines appears to be ready. And it's going to be Jose Marti with a kickoff. And we're on the way here at Winchester Park. And immediately St. George's College with the possession. Adrian Reed, the number 11, has been playing in a, a deep lying role in the middle of the park for St. George's College. It's a role that we are used to seeing him play for Cavalier in the Jamaica Premier League. And here they are coming forward. Spence was trying to, to make his way through. Ran into a, a bit of traffic there. Reese. Taylor. Spence couldn't quite gather. And the keeper should get there before the threat of Hansha. Yeah, Thompson goal for St. George's. Both of these keepers were in the squad. Both of their keepers were in the squad last year. But it was Dejan Davis who was in net. So a change in that regard this season. It's an experienced goalkeeper room for the Georgians. They've usually season. had trouble with goalkeepers in the past, haven't they? Yeah, so it's, it's good for them to have two set keepers who understand their roles in the team. Never Bertis Bell there. St. George's College head coach for quite some time now. Has delivered 15 titles to this institution. One of the winningest coaches in schoolboy football history, really. Someone synonymous with St. George's football. Would be the longest serving coach at this level. When compared with all the other coaches in the Manning and Acosta Cup competitions. Reed looking for options, switching it over to, to Taylor. Taylor's first touch wasn't the best, and he has to come back to retrieve. This is Reese. Or rather, that was Gale. Ozemati trying to show that they are not overawed by the occasion. Nice touch and play. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Adrian Reed occupying a deeper role for this St. George's team. Oh, nice give and go. There's some space to work with, two to aim for. And Jose Marte with the clearance, Jose Marte with the clearance and the follow up over the top. Yeah. Tishan O'Neill there. Played in a deep line role last season, advancing now. Looking to get his third goal of the season, but blazed that one over the bar. That's just a small insight to what we can expect from St. George's. Patient in the builder, but once they get one of those wing backs in behind, it's danger for any team. There's Patrick Lewis. He's been coaching for over 16 years now. Come on, 
St. George's College on the attack once more, and that one is put into touch. St. George's College will have a throw in deep into Bozemati's territory. O'Neill. St. George is trying to settle. Mitchell. Ball over the top. Ozemata should clear and it is, but not too far out. Captain has it. Powell switching the play or trying to. <laughs> Opportunity here for St. George's. Again. Good give and go play. Now to the byline. Pulls it back. It's opportunity here. One nil to St. George's. Well, they tore them apart again. And Tayshawn O'Neill with his third goal. They fired a warning shot just a minute earlier. But this time they did make Jose Mati pay. And with six minutes gone, St. George's College with the advantage. One nil. Yeah, and it's the exact same play that occurred not too long ago. Intricate play down the right-hand side, and then once it got in, Tayshawn O'Neill advancing into that right-hand half space, advancing late into the box, crushing it, and then crushing his shot right into the back of the net. And early, early days here, and Jose, Jose Martin under the cash. It's St. George's 1, Jose Martin nil. Yep just well worked really well worked and Ozimati didn't have much of an answer there Burkett Reed lofted ball over the top tries to keep control Burkett's effort 2-0 well, George is number 10. He usually makes those look easy. And Burkett, with that hit, gets his 12th goal this season. And it's a walk in Manchester, in Winchester Park at the moment. It definitely is a walk. A literal walk in the park. Not the cleanest hit that Brian Burkett has ever delivered. It was a good pass over the top by Reed. Just decided to get his shot off and the goalkeeper was just not alert didn't have the agility to get down quick enough and brian burkett delivering his 12th goal of the season to put st george's college two nil up in a really really short space of time well Ozumati, can they respond they managed to get out of their own penalty areas taylor ball played up field burkett again is there but good communication at the back between defender and goalkeeper. Gale for Jose Marti. Trying to get by Taylor. Couldn't keep that one in play. Throw into St. George's. Yeah, man, 
Tishon O'Neill has been good so far along with his nine assists. He's picked up now his third goal this season. Yes, I'm occupy a really deep role last season, O'Neill. Well, here's an opportunity for Jose Marti. This one sent inside. The keeper has to parry it away. It was a, a good hit on that occasion. Yeah, Jose Marti posing a little bit of a threat, especially from those deep crosses, looking to really flood the box, and it was a good shot, actually. Yeah, it came from Reese. Still looking for his first goal this season, Kwesi Reese. And now Jose Marti, they have a, a free kick from deep. Kiefer Powell, who has a couple of assists to his name, is behind it. Powell and it was a deflection and Hanchard couldn't quite gather and it should be a goal kick to St. George's College. Yeah. And of course Brian Burkett with 12 goals to his name so far this season. Yeah, inching closer and closer to last season's tally. It's 14 goals I believe he got or 15 last season. He has six assists to his name so far this year as well. Yeah, one of the more talented players in the competition. Brian Burke, it has been for all of his seasons, really. Also has Premier League experience with Dumbo Holding. Here he is. Yep, lovely touch out wide now, but too much on it. Yeah, O'Neill trying to spring through Peart yet again. It's clearly a tactic that St. George's College have been working on. Peart got his first assist of the season for O'Neill's goal. We a lovely interplay going back to go forward. Ball chipped into space on this left-hand side and safety first as far as the Ozamati defense was concerned. Here's the corner kick, Taylor to take it, headed away. St. George's College still trying to keep the live, but not afraid to start again from the back, which they do. Lofted ball inside the ear of the keeper, sees it all the way and lost it. And was that a late challenge? Well, the kick goes the other way. The crowd was excited about an, a possible penalty there. Yeah, but the referee judged that maybe Burkett had fouled the keeper first. I'm not quite sure what he was seeing there that looked like a penalty to me, but referee saw it otherwise. Played into space once more. Here's a cross coming in by a Johnny Peart. Now Reed and Burkett. Spence pokes it out wide. Taylor gives chase. Jindu Powell. Gets a return ball from Taylor. Powell with the dink. Yeah, 
And uh, Ozumati trying to come forward now. Hanchard left it behind. He needs to be sharper. Tilly inside now. Lovely touch into space from Spence, who takes the shot on the turn. Ooh. Well, that could have been disastrous. Yeah, I think this goalkeeper needs a little bit of a waking up. Jamar Reed. Or Jamir Reed. The Jose Marty goal has been very sharp, one might say, to start off. And he's going to face more pressure now. Another corner kick to St. George's College. They're second inside the area. Shot taken! Looks as if there was a handball before Reed struck that one home. Yeah, there was. A lot of defensive issues I'm seeing for Jose Marti. Too many St. George's players left unoccupied around the penalty spot. I think two or three players there would have had a free shot. Some, something that needs to be sorted. They've given up possession in a dangerous position. Taylor comes away with it for St. George's College. Puts it into space. Spence trying to get round his marker who committed the foul. St. George is trying to move away quickly, but <laughs> the referee wasn't having that one at all. Judging on the free kick exploits we've seen from Adrian Reed this season, already has scored multiple. And then when you couple that with the lack of sure handedness by Jameer Reed in the Jose Marte goal, this might be a recipe for disaster. Let's see. Well, Reed with the free kick goes goalwards. And yep, yeah, it was a recipe for disaster. And Burkett was there to mop up the spill from Reed again that's his second of the game and Burkett now gets his 13th goal this season unlucky for Jose Mati but St. George's College with a 3-0 advantage now yeah I'm not quite sure if I want to say it's unlucky I just think it's poor goalkeeper play yet again Adrian Reed didn't even place that one too well it was just on target but once he was on target the goalkeeper Jamia Reed had to deal with it didn't deal with it and right on hand was Brian Burkett more alert than anyone else and that's why he's one of the leading goal scorers in this competition 13 goals now he's really turning the screw and St. George's are turning the screw Sabir Taylor turning expertly as well ball played over the top once more over to the right hand side they're just lining up at the moment and there's a fourth and it's Spence Matthew Spence gets his eighth goal this season. And with just 18 minutes gone, St. George's College, they are piling on now. Yeah, I said that the goalkeeper was to blame for maybe a couple of the earlier goals. He could do nothing about that one. That was just some excellent ball play by St. George's College. That's what they're known for. But yeah, this one was brilliant. Adrian Reed to Burkett, excellently taken down. Chip over the top. Matthew Spence, yeah. Goalkeeper in no man's land, yes. But he could do nothing about that one. That was just some lovely play. And 4-0. We're not even 20 minutes in, Donald. Yeah. One thing I've noticed about St. George's College when they're playing is that, and I'm sure other schools do it as well, but it's the chemistry that they do have. You see the, the slight finger pointing as to where they want the runners to go we, we see it with almost every play in the attacking third that they do have as uh, Jose Marti trying to respond ball played across and 
Somehow he manages to reach again Jindu Powell. And it's a goal kick. Yeah, you make a really good point, Donald. Uh, um, you know, one of the best coaches in world football, Mikel Arteta, once said, or earlier said this season, that when it comes to him in terms of developing relationships on the field, sometimes the relationships outdo the tactics that he wants to employ. So a lot of the time when you see players being played in close proximity t towards each other, it's because that they have an unspoken relationship. They know where they want the ball. Each player knows each player's movement. And that's something that we've seen over the years with St. George's and it's continuing here. I saw that you were about to say something when I mentioned one of the best coaches in the world, but I guess that's for another time, Dana. It is for another time. I, I will not confirm or deny that statement. Yellow card is out. And is flashed in the direction of the Jose Marti skipper. This is why he's in the book. He was late. Here's an opportunity again. Swept across the area too far in front of Spence and the Johnny Peart. Seems as if we're going to get a water break. I think this one is well needed for Jose Marti. Yeah, they're just having a couple of words there, the captain, as well as Kwesi Reese. But yeah, the players are going to get themselves refreshed. Midway the first half, four goals already in this. Yeah. A lot of work will have to be done on the highlights package in this one. Something that you're looking forward to, obviously. But yeah, St. George's College. This is a battle between first and third in this group, you know. And uh, it seems as if St. George's College, they are very much on their way to get out of this group comfortably too. Four goals already in this one. That was some good work by Pierre you know, It was well converted. And then Burkett's effort. Well placed. And Burkett was there again to mop up that one after Reed had uh, taken the free kick. And then, yeah, look at that movement and look at that finish from Spence as well. Yeah, and Bertis Bell would have loved all that. Jose Mati apparently will be making a, a substitution. And it's going to be in net. Yeah, Jameer Reed, his afternoon will be over. Coming on for him will be Tahir Harnett. Yeah, he definitely did not have the best first 20 minutes. Jameer Reed. You know, they're switching over shin pads before they make that change. But you mentioned Jose Marte being third in this group, Donald. Um, yes, that is the case, but I don't think any team really has given St. George's College in this group a, a run for their money. Six games. This is the seventh game that they're playing. Uh, I was going to say, apart from Campion College, the seventh game they're playing. 20 minutes into the seventh game, and they've scored 39 goals. That's now the most in the competition. Conceded two, one to Arden, one to Campion in a game that they won 2-1. As I was saying, that's the only game that has given them any trouble. And even in that game, it was a stoppage time goal by Campion that breached them. And in the other game that they conceded, they won that game 7-1. So this is a St. George's outfit that has looked imperious, really. Already really close to passing their goal tally of last season in the group stage. So, but you say you, you said that they conceded against Campion. Yeah. And Arden. Yeah. Hmm. The two schools I will be seeing shortly. Yeah. But the score lines for both of those games were really contrasting. We don't need to look at the score lines specifically. Okay, no problem. All right. <clears throat> hmm. 
St. George's College again looking to come down that right hand side and Peart. Zamata doing well and uh, well, he was looking for a free kick there. Wasn't having it. They were free. Good work. Pennant. St. George's College, another one of those teams that form like a diamond around the back, Reed at the tip of it in defensive midfield. Seems as if he picked up a little bit of a knock. He's back up. Yeah, with the back threes that they employ, wing backs really high. So it almost looks like a 3-1-6, maybe a 3 one and a half, five and a half, because there's a floating player. Really intricate system, but Jose Marti looking to breach it now, and they've won a foul. Yep. Free kick. Yeah, Jaheim Henry coming across there and making that challenge. Did escape a booking. St. George's College have been under the radar, especially during pre-season. Their name wasn't mentioned a lot when you speak about the, the favorites of the Manning Cup this season. Yeah, but I think a lot of that is due to, you know, people really writing them off based on uh, the performances of the last couple of years. But I watched them in pre-season and they looked mighty impressive. And just from the fact that the names that they had returning not only Adrian Reed and Brian Burkett, but also Zabir Taylor, an extremely technical midfielder of the Phoenix Academy ilk. So you know how good he is on the ball and in tight spaces as well, Zabir. Not to mention Matthew Spence returning, along with all of the new players that they usually have bringing through as well. I mentioned their goalkeepers also. So this St. George's unit is nothing to scoff at. And I think really the only thing that's stopping them from pushing into that upper echelon Maybe it's a little bit of the intensity that they would have to match in the second round. That's still to be seen. Free kick to Jose Marti. And this one is driven hard along the ground and wasn't a bad hit at all. But uh, Jaden Thompson was pretty comfortable. Yeah, one of both goalkeepers would have been playing last year for St. George's College. They also lost a sweep of Jamani McDonald, who could have played this season. Imagine if they had him, their defense would have been even stronger. And Joshua Jackson as well, one of their strikers, could have played. So, on paper, I reckon he could have been stronger. Here's Taylor. He's uh, one of the generals in the middle of the park. Jabari Taylor, love to see him play. First touch inside. He receives the ball again. Taylor decides to take the shot off. And, uh, well, the new custodian holds on. Tahir Harnett. The possession stats must be ridiculous. doing just enough there to
stop the opportunity for the visitors. Yeah, Jose Marti have been plugging along, trying to get some attacks flowing, but haven't looked too dangerous in them so far. He's saying George's back line marshalling really well. Taylor afforded so much space, then he tries to send one, that one over the top. Jose Marti goes the other way now. Reed. Peart latching on, or trying to. They tend to want to move on with the game very quickly, St. George's College. Would yeah. also help that they're leading by four goals to nil. Yeah, and they're really hungry for goals yeah, also. they are. Probably really demoralized, Jose Marti. Gale sends it really long. Oh, that's lovely from Hanchard. Hanchard's effort. Whoa. It did miss by a lot. What a turn that was, though. You can see that he is their most dangerous player, Shemar Hanchard. And he was looking for a seven. Just look at this. Just wonderful. Yeah, and only one thing on his mind from he got that turn off. I'm not going to say they have a route to get back into the game, but if they are to get a goal or two, it seems as if he would come from his boot. Taylor, neatly done, finding Jintu Powell. No, it wasn't the best pass back to Taylor. Reed with the turn. Burkett with the touch. Slips it through to Taylor. Can shoot. Still Taylor. And Reed. Challenge coming in and yeah. I almost agree with the captain of Ozemati. I, th I actually thought he got the ball there, but Yeah, I think he was following him from before. Mm. From around right here. Adrian Reed the stronger player yeah had to reach around him as well to try and get it but the captain is frustrated and i think usually these go to adrian reed but we have seen brian burkett line up a few with his beautiful left foot and he's on a hat trick as well yeah burkett with the left foot or reed with the right The wall has been constructed, but the referee is unhappy with the movement of the wall, making sure that they're back the full 10 yards. So, will it be Burkett or will it be Reed? It's Brian Burkett. <laughs> you can hear the sigh from across the way. A little bit disappointed with the fact that that wasn't on target from Burkett, and he's disappointed as well. Yeah, he knows he can do better, but he was firmly struck. I think if he gets one maybe a little bit closer, big possibility we could see that one going into the net. One might, one might say that Georges have cooled off a bit. No goals in, what, the last 12 minutes? Yeah, we are keeping count, aren't we? Yeah. Well, it's best to keep count before we can. That is also true. Hanchard, he's a beast, isn't he? 
wins the foul. Punted long, keeper comes out, punches out, didn't go too far. But St. George's College responds well to the danger. Oh no, they don't. An opportunity here for Reese. Finally, they hack it out of the box. And Spence finding Peart. Hopeful ball to Taylor. Didn't reach him. Headley. St. George's College quick to react and they regain possession. And now they come forward into the attacking third. Peart. Peart inside to Spence. They are patient in the build up, St. George's College. They usually are. Trying to draw Jose Marti out of position before aiming for the killer pass. That pass wasn't killer. And uh, the whistle goes. Free kick to Jose Marti. Well, the St. George's College goalkeeper will need some attention. Jaden Thompson. Yeah, one of the younger players in this St. George's College team. He's a part of the under-16 team last season while also being a, the backup for the Manning Cup. He does have a good replacement, however. Tashoni Davis. Yeah. Sure hands not only on the football pitch, but on the cricket one as well. Represents St. George's in cricket also. They do also have a really good cricket program lush cricket field around the back of the school at Emmett Park. Just as lush as the football field here at Winchester Park. Penalty has been awarded to Jose Marti. Handled ball inside the box. And uh, Jose Marti looking to get back one in this half. No doubt it's going to be Hansha who will step up as we take a look at this. Yeah, I'm not quite sure about that one. The rule is if it hits the body first there is some leniency yeah i'm not quite sure about that one that's a tough tough call clearly off of his boot onto the body yeah but i did say a couple minutes ago that hanchard's boot would be the way jose Marti could get a goal in this one let's see if he can deliver hanchard from 12 yards shamar hanchard looking for his seventh gets it Jose Marti responds here at Winchester Park from the penalty spot, albeit. But they appreciate that goal in this tough first half. Yeah, harsh penalty con to concede, but once Hanshart was there, once he stepped up, yeah, there was really go only going to be one result, the form that he has showed in this first half and this season, in fact, his seventh of the season. And he has made this one 4 1. St. George is taking their foot off the 
pedal as we see another substitution being made by Jose Marti. Yeah, Damani Pinnock is coming on for Kimali Blackwood. I was trying to turn that one around the corner and the free kick awarded to Zamati. Ball over the top inside the area. And uh, he went down under the contact. <laughs> and, then, and then he's bemused <laughs> that he didn't at least get a corner kick, did Andrew Anderson for his team. Yep, Shamar Hanchard with seven goals so far this season. was looking for the return. Hanchad has it though. Free kick to St. George's College. Or rather, was it Marty? Taken Hanchard. Well, he did a rifle that one, didn't he? And here's a speculated effort. Good take by Jaden Thompson. Hazamati has grown more and more into the game. Based on the start, we thought this could have been a route. But uh, Azamati has responded, trying to make a game of this. They've had a couple of attempts on target. Question is, can St. George's College go into a second gear? I'm sure they can, but will they be able to? Can they even pip one before the halftime interval? Taylor? will be able to get there. <laughs> Wasn't smart play to try and cut back inside. Reed. Deshaun O'Neill. Here they come again. I was thinking of an effort. Powell. 
and too far in front of uh, O'Neill on that occasion. Has been quite as fluent from St. George's after the first 20 minutes or so, after the water break, actually. As you mentioned, Donald Jose Marty growing slowly into this one, but... Well, here's Taylor. Thinking of an effort, and it was blocked. Burkett looking to complete his hat-trick in this first half. Peart. Lovely stuff. Taylor on his left. Feeding Powell. Driving it straight to Harnett. Yeah, I said but, and that's the reason why St. George is still possible that they can turn up and show some unbelievable quality on the ball, and that was a really good move from them. The intending a goal, however. A lot of 50-50 calls going against the Georgians in this first half, including that penalty that they conceded. Taylor picking it up and feeding that one into space. Powell now and Spence. Spence looking to switch the play. <laughs> Read with a bit of a, a stretch to try and take that one down. Deemed to be a a bit dangerous by referee Hines. Free kick to Ozemati. As we're in the final minute of stoppage time. And it's clear that both teams just need to regroup. They are playing in scorching conditions after all. Literally under the midday sun. But that's a delightful ball through to Spence. But the flag is up for offside against their number eight. Yeah, another marginal decision there. We were at an angle, so I couldn't quite see, but he did look really close. Well, Ozemati looking for one more. Taylor does well, but Headley wins it back. And getting, well, Gale was trying to get involved, but the, the whistle goes, and that's the end of the first half. Well, it was easy street for the first portion of this contest. Four unanswered goals before we were midway the first half by St. George's College, but Osimati did respond via the penalty spot. And after 45 minutes, Osimati, they know that they have a lot of work to do. St. George's College at home, leading by four goals to one. Welcome back to Winchester Park as we continue our coverage of the Manning Cup here at the home of champions in this Group F, St. George's College at home to Jose Marti and the home team leading by four goals to one as we enter the start of the second half. Referee Hines is ready and we are underway once more. St. George's College did have the 
majority of the possession in that first half, as well as the majority of the chances. And they are just looking to pick up the tempo. They did score four goals in the first 20 minutes of play. They had uh, pulled up the handbrake a bit. But now for this second half, they're, I'm sure they would have received the instructions to, to push on and don't allow Jose Marti to get in the game. Such is the competitive nature of Neville Bertis Bell and Marcel Gaines as uh, coaches of this St. George's team. There is Marcel Gale, who's also with the Premier League club, Waterhouse FC. Craig Butler is also in the house, as he would have received news about 24 hours ago that one of his players would have been called up late to the, the national team, the Jamaica team, for their Nations League matchup with Grenada on Thursday evening. Here's an opportunity now for Ose Marti inside the area. And the shot is taken. Oh, that was brilliant. The follow-up, not so much. Still in the area. Ose Marti, oh, it's cleared off the line. Well, three bites at the cherry, but they could not come up with the fruit. Ose Marti looking for their second. And St. George's College just getting away with it by the skin of their teeth. Oh, wow. How did they not score there? It was pennant on the line. Who was the savior in the end? Well, that was quite dramatic for the visitors. If ever there was a wake up call, that would have been one for St. George's College. And all of a sudden, a pep in their step, Jose Marti. They don't have a lot of numbers back, you know. Looking for the snapshot on that occasion. The captain, Kiefer Powell. Nice turn that was from Reese. Almost won it back. Challenge coming in. Pretty clean, but it's a throw into St. George's. Certainly not the same start that we got at the start of the first half. Jose Marti looking to press the issue at the start of the second. St. George's College on the back foot for a bit, but no doubt they'll grow back into this one. Lovely ball inside the area by Tayshon O'Neill, who takes it down and tried to supply the, the pass. The drummers are here. Reese lost it. Peart. Reed. Taylor. More emphasis on a press from Jose Marti at the start of this second half as well. Not letting the St. George's player has St. George's players have as much space as they did. I say as Adrian Reed takes the ball into acres of it. Unable to supply the pass, however. Marty on again. Yep. 
can't quite transition into the attacking third. Oh, that's lovely. Really good football that was. Couldn't keep it in play, however. Here's a teammate. That's uh, Tishon Henry. Couple of assists to his name so far for Tishon. Yeah. That wasn't bad at all. Taylor just a little bit slight in the middle of the park so far in this second half. Again, he lost out. Shot that's driven. And no issues there for Jaden Thompson. Yeah, not the best strike that he's put forth so far today, Hanchard. Spence trying to get there. Good defending that was. Well, corner kick has been awarded to St. George's College. Taylor pulls it back. Pennant. Back to Taylor. They come against St. George's College. Reed cutting inside and trying to get the shot off was Burkett. Well, here's Reed. It was Spence actually. An opportunity here for St. George's College to the byline. And it's put behind for a corner kick. Burkett making that run to the byline. George's College with the dink inside the air at the back post, so he should have done better there. Tayshawn O'Neill. He almost caught in two minds whether to go for goal himself or head it across. Ended up doing neither. This game in the second half being played at a much higher tempo than in the first. Well, definitely by Jose Marti. I'm yeah, not quite sure if George's are up to it as yet, but they are asserting themselves a bit better in the past couple of minutes i say again as they give away the ball <laughs> a bit of a tactical tweak as well by jose marty their captain Kiefer powell going up front from center back well another hopeful ball inside the box that peart couldn't quite grab and now tayshawn o'neill o'neill drives an effort into a jose marty defender and now here's Reed. Reed does the same thing. Comes out to Peart looking for the give and go. Peart to the byline. Tried to play that one at the back post. Pass was a little bit overweight. Here they come. A speculative effort. The keeper holds on. Harnett with the take. Surely much assured in net harnet than his counterpart not sure why he didn't start yeah that's something we have to ask the coach after oh, that's a lovely take at burkett though bit of a heavy heavy touch heavier than he wanted to make
asking a lot for Pierre to do, but he, he wins it. Not quite the same link up that O'Neill and Pierre had in the first half a couple of times early. <laughs> Pierre was not expecting the return at all, he was still in the outside position. Maybe a little bit guessed. Well, this heat is taking a toll on me, so I can imagine the players on the field. Here's a rather speculative effort that took a deflection. I thought it took a deflection, but apparently not. take from Spence. Spence pulls it across. Oh, that's a wonderful interception. Critical too. Now here is Jose Marti. Oh, that's a lovely run into space. Finish should have been better though. All of a sudden, space is at the back. And uh, Jose Marti capitalizing, they'll get a corner kick. I'm not quite sure it should have been a shot in the first place. His teammate was in acres of space if he had just cut this one back. It was a good save in the end by Thompson. Corner kick taken short. Here's the delivery that is pretty poor. will get there, does well. Inside the area, Peart, can he finish? That's a good finish. Wonderful run down the right-hand side, made his way inside the box. And a Johnny Peart opens his account this season. And St. George's College with a 5-1 advantage now. Yeah, you already got an assist earlier. St. George's College have been really pushing down that right-hand side all game. And this time he didn't score it across. Good upper body strength to keep off the defender. And that's a really composed finish also. He's been the definition of a marauding right wing back all game. And he certainly has gotten his reward. St. George's College 5 now to Jose Marti 1. Really impressed with that goal by Johnny Peart. St. George's College trying to regain the type of control that they had in the first half. Hopefully that goal hasn't Knock the wind out of the sails of Jose Marti, who started the second half. 
much better than they did the first. But on a hot day like this, behind by four goals yet again, it will be difficult for them to really pick it up. Being at Winchester Park, it's, it's always a, a wonderful experience. And uh, their school usually in strong support. Here's an opportunity for St. George's College. Oh, a strong hand there, but the follow up is put away. The flag had stayed down, and Burkett completes his hat trick. Well, he has been pouncing on the spills all afternoon. And again, he pounced on one there. I thought it was a good save from Harnett, but it was right into the path of St. George's number 10. And Burkett, again, providing the finish to make it six. Well, he is a natural attacking midfielder, but he has showed the instincts of a striker in this contest two times now. He has been the first to react. <laughs> Was that the knockout punch? You asked a very good question, Donald. St. George's would surely hope so. It's been brilliant by them. Six goals now. I'm sure they would be a bit annoyed to concede the one, but the attacking performance has been really good so far today. Burkett with his third of the game and his 14th this season. And the St. George's College making the turn back on Easy Street. Lige Williams, maybe. So the restart again. St. George's College usually try to play the football quite easy. And here they come again in the attacking third. And that was easy. Still an opportunity to capitalize here. Taylor. Reed. Well, that's unlike him. Yeah, lazy strike there by the man they call Jimmy made sure to call him a man because he's quite imposing in that midfield but only 17 years of age Adrian Reed Jr eight goals six assists to his name so far this season all from the base of midfield Imposing can he be? What kind of future does he have, Adrian Reed Jr.? He has played so much football, and that's what you like. 
when names are being called and you consider them prodigies, you know, especially Jamaica. They don't have the opportunity to play a lot, but he does for his club, Cavalier as well. St. George's College is number 11. And it's not only the the fact that he's playing, it's the types of games he's playing as well, the yeah. responsibility that he has taken up at that Cavalier team. It's huge. Yeah. Whether he, well, he started out at the heart of defense for them, then made his way into a deep midfield role. Yeah, Rudolph Speed said directly that he was the direct replacement for Richard King who had moved away in January. So that's huge praise coming for, for such a young player. And he's taking up responsibility in the St. George's team now as well, being the captain this season. Being and played more of an attacking midfield role the past couple of seasons, but now we're seeing him at the base controlling things. We're going to see a substitution now. Matthew, yep. Matthew on. Spence. Yep. His time is up. And Frey Campbell, who has two goals and two assists to his name this season, number 13. Also, about to see Malik Lorraine replace Ajani Pierre, who has a goal and assist today only. All right, wing back. So the two players will come on the park for St. George's College with two goals and two assists. Yeah, we're going to see a couple of substitutions for Jose Marti as well. Andrew Anderson is off. And so too Raquel the Headley. kick fired high Jose Marti trying to make their way forward once more and uh, they'll get a corner kick. Take it short. Inside, uh, did that take a deflection again? Yeah, it did. Another corner kick to Zemati. Second water break of the game going to take place now. Definitely needed in these conditions. Today's a stark contrast to what we saw yesterday in Kingston, Jamaica. Thunderstorms, strong winds, flooding. Yeah, there are a couple of freak storms and all that we saw yesterday there was some danger that maybe these matches 
wouldn't be completed or even played. It's a good thing that those conditions have held off today, so far at least. Because we do have another match coming your way shortly after this. How much of a rivalry is that though? They do call it the Uptown Derby, but... But I think that would cause a different discussion, but here are some of the goals, including this Brian Burkett hat-trick, the first of the lot. Calm finish. And this one, I mentioned the striker's instinct. That's the first time he displayed it. And now here's a second. Good through pass initially, but he followed it up all the way. And as you can see on your screens now, it is brilliant Burkett. And it was a, or has been, a brilliant hat trick. Six one, St. George's. Lovely ball played forward again. Flag stayed down. Frey Campbell slowing down the play. One back by Burkett, thinking of a shot. The breeze taking it away. I think he work it had a little bit more time. A little bit more time, yes. Yeah, time and space to get in there. Paparazzi everywhere, Leger Williams. Yeah, nothing I'm sure you're not used to. Me on the other hand, I'm still getting a little bit used to it, you know? St. George's College, definitely one of the more well-supported teams in the competition. It is on their school grounds, to be fair, but but well, we've been to out. schools. But well, we've been to schools that you don't see the level of support that you see here. Well, winning breeds support. To be fair, they were well supported even during the years that they weren't winning as much. Yeah, good school spirit. Burkett looking to switch the play. Wonderful ball out wide. That's a good challenge. that St. George's College did have a, a good goalkeeper room and here's evidence of it we're going to see last year's number one Johnny Davis come on for a few minutes and the number one today Thompson getting a rest one might say well he hasn't had a whole lot of work to do has made a, a couple of saves a couple of direct shots towards him couldn't keep out the penalty that was the Marty had. Oh, that's a wonderful first touch. What a save. But it trickles across the side in the end. 
agonizing for Jose Marti, but absolute delight for Brian Burkett, who gets his fourth of the game. Hartnett thought, Hartnett thought that he had a strong hand on it, but really and truly, the power from Burkett was sufficient and St. George's College in seventh heaven. Well, earlier we said that he was brilliant when he had his hat-trick, but I think this one is the best of the bunch. Excellent takedown, good strength to hold off the defender, and yes, the shot may have been gotten a hand to it, the goalkeeper for Jose Marti, but it was Burkett's shot, which I'm sure was lasering into the back of the net. And he has been great today, Brian Burkett. And he's going to take his leave now. It is a man of the match performance, isn't it? Yeah, probably the easiest one we've picked so far this season. Four goals. And he's been replaced by Shaquan Clark. Mitchell, trying his luck, found the gate as opposed to the goal. There is Shaquan Clark. Lovely play out wide. Deshaun O'Neill trying to beat his marker, couldn't do so. Oh, that was a beautiful bit of play by Jose Marti as they come charging down this left. But too much on it, the pass. Yep. Decent work up to that point from Quasi Reese. Shaquan Clark with a, a missed kick, but he wins it back and then loses it. Ball touched forward, an opportunity for the second here. Cleared. Oh no! That goes across the line. He was trying to clear it, but uh, Jose Marti getting there second of the game under strange circumstances. St. George's College not being forthright with the clearance. And uh, Jose Marti in the end, getting a second. Yeah, it was a good save initially by Davis. A lot of luck for the ball to even ricochet back into the six-yard box. And then when Pennant attempted the clearance, even more luck, probably too calm in trying to clear it. It looks as if it was Nathan Gordon rushing on to him. And for the first time this season, St. George's College have conceded more than once. Well, another opportunity. Jose Marti looking for a third, spied around for a corner kick. Ball set inside the area, the keeper comes out to punch the way. Here at St. George's College. Opportunity here for Free Campbell. No. Ran out of room.
St. George's College, they love to play out from the back, and you can see it on several occasions that they are not as forthright with their clearances as possibly they should, and it did cost them conceding a second, but here they are looking for an eighth. There's a challenge coming in on Tayshawn O'Neill. of skillful ballers in their ranks for Zabati. Well, it is a school from Spanish town. We are pretty skillful over there. We? Oui. Yeah, I didn't say necessarily skillful at football. We can be skillful at other things. Copy that. Yep. Ronaldo Lawrence comes on, replacing Zabir Taylor. So, it's now time for the Sports Max app moment of the game. And it was uh, this delightful move. Pulled back and uh, finished well. Tayshawn O'Neill with the goal. And that's the Sports Max app moment of the game. Courtesy of the Sports Max app. Pedot has been involved in a lot of drama for St. George's College at the back. Remember, he was the one who saved, who made a goal line clearance just before the end of the first half, preventing Ozemati from getting a second. And of course, in trying to make that clearance a couple of minutes ago, the ricochet would have come off Nathan Gordon. Series needing some attention there. Because they might have shown a few flashes of some intricate play. But not enough to really 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 trouble St. George's taken down there by Ronaldo Lawrence one of the substitutes one of his first appearances this season was a star in their under 16 team a year or so ago no, that was a lovely ball out wide by Lawrence. And 
the effort at the end of all that. It is going to be a, a corner kick. The line here with a good ball through. A player that St. George's will be very glad to have back, Lawrence. Affectionately, affectionately known as Rin Rin amongst his peers. Corner to be swung in by Furry Campbell. Yeah, in the shadows. Here's the delivery. Another corner coming up. That's not a bad delivery at all. Not clear properly. Still playing around with it. Reed, again, his shot is charged down. effort is charged down. And that resulting effort from Malik Lorraine over the top. Arden High School in the building. The team from Arden Road here on North Street to take on Campion College. What a wonderful institution that is. And Campion is also here. Speaking of wonderful institutions, under 16 urban area football champions last season, Campion College against all the odds. Beat out St. George's College, a lot of these same players in that final. A program really on the up. A cross has come up too heavy from St. George's. Well, you're talking about two of the leading academic institutions in the country, though, in all seriousness, Arden High and Campion College. And uh, they, they lead the way on that front. Well, well, one of them leads the way. <laughs> the other one is, I would suppose, in the conversation. It is safe to say, though, that Arden would have won more sporting titles as opposed to Campion College. See you're clutching at straws, but here's an opportunity for St. George's College as they look to get today. Not afraid to recycle. Just allowing the clock to tick away as those Marty trying to clear their lines. Now the second time of asking. Interception made. Clark. Reed. <laughs> Reed was. <laughs> that was pretty obvious. Pushed off the ball. Not sure why he's complaining. Malik Reed. I'm not sure if Reed actually knows his own strength. Probably thought it was just a, an ease off. Oh, 
Maybe the final opportunity for Reed to get on the score sheet here from a set piece. He has been off target before, but this one is a little bit closer and well within his range. We know the boy has quality. There's another yellow card has been shown. I suppose it's some indiscretion with where to be in the wall. But the four-man wall, the five-man wall set up by Jose Marti. Adrian Reed behind it. Oh, that did not miss by much. The keeper was motionless. He yeah, tried to pick out the opposite corner there, Adrian Reed. Agonizingly close. Oh, that has found its way through, you know? And the shot has found its way over. Yeah, lack of composure in the finish there. Jaquan Campbell. It's almost as if he was a bit surprised that he was found. Rushed it, didn't need to take it that early. Took it from here yeah, before even entering the box and blazed it over. Would that be a little bit concerning for you, the fact that Jose Marti have been able to find so so many gaps in the St. George's College defense? I mean, yes and no. I mean, yes, it's always concerning when your defense looks a little bit suspect, but I don't think St. George's College, all due respect to Jose Marti, have been taking this one with the full level of seriousness that they would if it was a more difficult opposition, one might say. I mean, at the end of the day, you're playing against 11 players, so yeah, their potency is telling when they go forward. They do have the numbers to support. But again, you probably won't see that level of potency and them be concrete at the back for games against better opposition. And that's a fair point. But there is a thing as playing down and up to your upper the opposition so I think once they match the intensity of a lot of the bigger teams then we should see a change Jose Marti being patient as well here's a shot that drifts wide and I reckon that should be that for this encounter. That's the end of the game. St. George's College scoring seven, led by a four-timer by that youngster there, number 10, Brian Burkett, moving up to 15 goals this season. Spence was on the score sheet, as well as Tayshawn O'Neill. as well as Ajani Peart. And uh, it was wonderful from the Georgians who come away with a 7-2 victory. As we take a look at the full-time highlights there, and it was really easy for St. George's College in the first few minutes. In fact, four goals were scored in the first 20 minutes of this one. And they really went through Ozimati on several occasions like a knife through butter. And uh, again, some good work on the right hand side. Tayshawn O'Neill with the finish. But yeah, Ajani Peart also had a good game along that right hand side. And uh, O'Neill 
placing that well. And then in the eighth minute, another one. Burkett finding the corner. Keeper, I suppose, reacted late. But uh, to the left. Yep. Couldn't quite dig that one out. And Burkett, one of four. Jose Marti tried to get involved and they had a couple of attempts on target and then Burkett became poacher in chief Adrian Reed with the free kick and uh, Burkett mopping up the spill there to get his second of the game and then right after that a beautiful lob inside the area and what a cool finish that was from Matthew Spence Really delightful to watch. And Spence getting his eighth goal this season. Burkett with the chip. Just directing where Spence should go. Spence went and he finished. And uh, Hanchard didn't see a lot today. But goodness me, he tried. And then that long range effort. Resulted in a handled ball inside the box. Hanchard stepped up and scored himself his seventh goal of the season. In the second half, so many opportunities for Ozemati with this play. And then it was cleared off the line in the end by Pennant. And then Peart winning that one and then slotting home showing real strength there in beating the defender and then look at the composure for the finish oh yeah he just slipped that one through didn't he and that's how he opened his account this season Ajani Peart and he was excited so was Neville Bertis Bell O'Neill working well and then Burkett following up after the initial shot by Spence was saved by Harnett and the Burkett finishing off his hat trick there And there would be more look at this takedown from Burkett and then the finish strong hand on it yes not strong enough from the Ozamati custodian but what a first touch that was and then the finish to the left of Harnett and Burkett had four and they were enjoying it so was he Brian Burkett And then more opportunities and the clearance by Pennant came off Nathan Gordon and he would get his first this season turned out to be a consolation in the end Another one for Jose Marti, St. George's College with 21 shots, nine of which were on target. Jose Marti with 13 shots, eight of which were on target. 12 fouls were committed in this one, St. George's College. A little bit peculiar to see them being the more physical team, although the yellow cards were shown in the Jose Marti camp. Uh, St. George's College, the possession went down slightly in that second half. They ended up with 57% of the possession. It's time for the sports match, man of the match. And there was only going to be one, right? Jene, take it away. Thank you, Donald. Congratulations, Brian Burkett. You are the Sportsmax Man of the Match. Brian, you have scored 16 goals so far. What is the tally of the amount of goals you want to score this season? Well, I just want to help the team. 
in the best way possible. Uh, my personal aim is to score 30 or more goals, so let's see what happens this season. Well, you're at 16, so you're more than halfway there. I see your dad behind the camera. Is he one of your main supporters this season? Yes, uh, my parents, close friends, family, they're all there, teammates, coaching staff, so they're all there to support me. Well, let's talk about today's match. You guys managed to score six goals. You scoring four out of that, well, seven goals. You, you guys managed, you managed to score four out of that seven. Tell me how you're feeling. Well, I'm feeling good. Um, finished the game injury-free. Um, got the victory, thanks be to God. Um, so let's see what's up next. Okay, thank you and congratulations. And now we welcome the coach of Jose Marti. Mr. Patrick Lewis. Coach, not the result you would have wanted today, but your boys managed to score two goals in today's game. Are there any other positives you can take away from today? Well, basically, um, I have players that went in the game that um, give a, 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 a good impression of themselves. So I guess we look good going forward, though we lost the game. Well, in the second half, your boys were more competitive. Was it more of an improvement of your team, or do you think Georgie's ease off of the gas? What is your take? Well, basically, um, I guess the TV got to them, but in the second half, they have a more um, understanding of the TV and the crowd and the whole thing. So I guess that's why they play better. Well, you're third on the table. Is that an indication of the progress or the growth of the program you've implemented at Hosea Marty? Most definitely. And coach, lastly, young Harnett showed a lot of quality. You brought him onto the park and many were wondering why he didn't start. Is that giving any complications as to you picking a starting lineup? No, not really. Arnett is a is a um, is a victim of the lightning, so I'm take, I'm taking my time to bring him back in the game. So that is why he didn't start. Well, thank you, coach. You're most welcome. And now we welcome the assistant coach of St George's College, Mr. Marcel Gale. Coach, no disrespect to Jose Marti, but it was a pretty easy day out for your boys. Which is more pleasing, the scoreline or the fact that you have seen things that you've worked on in training? Um, I don't want to be greedy, but both. I mean, the God be the glory. I mean, sunshine and the immaculate field. You know, it's a good performance from, from the boys. Um, I think they follow instruction well today. I mean, no easy feat. I mean, um, Jose Martin, I thought, played well today. You know, there's a few scary moments for us. And, you know, fortunately, our goalkeeper come up to first today. Well, your boys made a dominant start with four goals in less than 20 minutes. Is that something you are working on to replicate against tougher opponents? <laughs> um, you know, that was a part of it. And uh, I, I mean, um, the, the, the occasion can be overwhelming at, at times. You know, we're talking about that. And if we seize the game early in, um, in the first half, and which we did that today, and I think that created really catalyst for us today. Well, when I spoke to Coach Neville earlier, he said he was confident in his boys, and they surely proved that confidence. Going forward, how will you help, well, you and your management team help in aiding to keep these boys focused and grounded? Um, you know, our, our first um, objective was to come out of a zone. I think we did that now by qualifying today. So we turn now to, to our next um, objective, you know, to, to go second round. And we go from there. So for, for, for now, it's, it's get everybody um, sharp and ready for the next show. Okay, thank you, Coach. And I just want to say um, to all of the, the females, I mean, we, the pink today signify uh, for breast cancer. So we are here to support uh, the breast cancer um, you know, females. And females. So. Okay, thank you, Coach. So St. George's College with a 7 2 win over Jose Marti. And they sit comfortably atop the group and they are well on their way to the next round of the Manning Cup. Yo, Issa, my schoolboy football look this season. People, I'm ready, you know. All right, then, pick up, Manning Cup. Oliver Yashil, you make me link up. See what the champions cup, then run six water cup. Which team I win the championship this season? Yo, it's a pop and dive at school. I got finished the league and beat her. Which you I got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, it's a busy fans are roll out all boat. Be a flag for a vehicle. Looking at the good, but loan as a boat as some school and community. Too. People, nothing at the stand. Some are listening to prayer. They were some about the party. Country and turn your night for one reason. He's a schoolboy football. Good job. Look one, look all. Which team are the best and I got better than the best and if I get we beat your chest. He's a schoolboy football. That team could rise and that team could fall. But 
Competition and never have a nice up. People love see when boy I get nice up on the field. I'm going to school from far and them never with peaceful and the youths now. Yo, it's a school boy football, no local. The youths are move on to international big league. And I still people hard, but member wish party start. It's a school boy.